morning, everybody. Today we're talking about shaving. I'm just kidding. Brandy and I were literally talking about that and then I realized the camera might be rolling. Um, we're going to talk about Monday morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Um, hope you all had an amazing weekend, wherever you're from. Uh, what a stellar, stellar weekend here in Calgary. Um, the sun was out, it was warm. Um, just fantastic. Uh, this upcoming week, yeah, the weather's taking a bit of a dip. We're cooling down, uh, maybe more seasonal temperatures. Um, but that's spring. Welcome to it. Welcome to the roller coaster of weather. Um, if you got your plants in, um, I would recommend maybe looking at a frost blanket. Uh, if you did planters, maybe get ready to lift them inside. Uh, there might be a couple of frosts in the morning, so just be aware of that. And uh, yeah, we had an amazing webinar on Saturday, uh, all about planters. We had a ton of people sign up for it. Always exciting to see. And we discussed everything planters. Um, and yeah, it was it was just a really good time here. So I hope you all had a good time. Um, so I thought this week, um, kind of all over the place. I mean, we've talked about trees, we've talked about planters, we've talked about everything. Now we're talking about soil. And I always feel that soil should be one of those subjects at the very beginning, um, essentially based on uh, how integral it is to everything and having an understanding. But uh, I mean, I haven't even planned it yet. I know a lot of people haven't, and these are all educational. We can watch them anytime we want. We can have fun with them. So I thought this week we would discuss soil. And if you guys have ever followed along, um, you'll always know I discuss soil whenever we talk about planting. Um, doesn't matter if we're talking about a, uh, a house plant getting moved to a different part uh, or if we're doing a tree um, and everything in between. Whatever the case might be, it always, always comes down to the soil. And I think you guys have probably heard me say, you know, if I had to choose between uh, amending my soil or all the fertilizer I could ever have, I will always take soil amendment. Always, always, always by a country mile. He's a big guy, eh? We have, we have a robin hopping around right next to us, having a little visit. Uh, spring, spring. Um, so yeah, uh, the, reason I, uh, the reason I say that, um, the reason I go on about uh, about soil um, so much is how integral it is and how many times um, I hear people uh, come up to me and they approach me and um, maybe they've never gardened before. Maybe they're not great at it. Maybe they've tried, but they're not getting the results they wanted, whatever the case might be. And I always ask them, uh, when was the last time you amended your soil? Or they'll come up to me and be like, uh, I'm doing a veggie plot. I need all new soil. Either of those. Uh, and honestly, you don't. Okay. Soil is broken down into subsections. Okay. And all of those subsections are essential. And what will end up happening is we end up most of the time with a dormant soil. And when you think about it, soil, um, it houses thousands of animals, burrowing animals, uh, mammals, even some burrowing birds, any number of insects, all the way down to the countless thousands of microorganisms, uh, nematodes and everything else that live in there. Some beneficial, some not so beneficial. A um, couple of perfect examples, the earthworm gives us worm castings, amazing for your soil. And then one, and I'll go inside for this one because it's all soil, the fungus gnats, okay? Not great at all, uh, but they both require soil. So having a healthy soil that, that does all of that is amazing. Soil acts as a filter for all the water that hits it. Uh, you may notice you take the exact same plant, uh, you have it inside in a pot, uh, you have it outside in a garden bed. You water it with the exact same water, same watering can. The inside one, the leaf tips start going brown. 
the outside form does not. The reason for that is your sublayers of soil act as a filter and they pull away those heavy minerals that you're inside. It's not even a soil, it's a growing medium. And we'll get to that all this week. It's soil, soil, soil. And soil acts as a natural water filter um, for the plants. It helps store uh, carbon and methane. It helps with the gas exchange. Whenever I've planted, you've, you've heard me say, I'm sure, about pushing down the soil and not compacting it because you need to allow that gas exchange to happen. That's what soils do. A soil is a living, you know, breathing organism that's made up of a multiple different factors. So when we look at what, what I consider, what, what is considered a healthy soil, okay, uh, it's made up, like I just said, of a number of layers. And first and foremost is the hummus or the organic layer. And that's essentially your rich compost. So let's not talk about our gardens for a second. Let's go out into nature. And if you've ever been in the forest um, and you've ever, you've ever dug down into that top layer of soil, it comes up and it's just falling apart in your hands. It's loose, it's rich. It's got that earthy smell. Um, it's just incredible, incredible stuff. And that's what this is. This is the hummus, the compost, the organic material. And every creature plays a part in that in the forest. Again, we select some we don't want in our gardens and that's fine. And that's why we buy this. But you go into the forest and you look and you're gonna find slugs uh, and snails and grubs and gnats and ants. So they're all working harmoniously because you're also gonna find all the critters that feed on them as well, all living harmoniously. A lot of us don't want a skunk in our backyard for good reason, but the skunk will eat the slugs after the slugs have eaten the leaves that have fallen down and broken it down into that organic material. So we may need to add that to our soil in the form of, uh, of compost or worm castings. Uh, the sea soil uh, I talk about a lot. Um, the canamays, uh, the green sand, etc., etc. And then the next layer, and most gardens have this, uh, and this is where your soil just looks tired, and that's the topsoil. And the topsoil, quite often, uh, it's a blend between what you call the alluviated soil and the hummus material, and it's mixed together. And you can buy topsoil from here. It's heavy, it holds water, it's a good foundation for plant roots to get into. If I'm doing a big pot outside, and I'm talking big, big, big pot, uh, even a veggie pot, something like that, I might even do a layer of topsoil at the bottom. Uh, and that's to help with moisture retention, weight, so it doesn't fall over. When the roots get down in it, they've got something to anchor to, as opposed to a growing medium, again, more on that later, um, like the Promix potting soil, uh, Promix herb and veg. Those aren't really soils, those are growing mediums. So the topsoil is extremely important. It's got goodness in it. It's got microorganisms. It's heavy, it's got density. And then the alluviated is where everything is sank down, but also being pushed up. Something else we don't notice because it is continuously happening in a series of millions and millions of minuscule movements is that your soil is always shifting. You have, you have a, a bag of soil like this, just this size, okay? And you put an earthworm in it. Well, you've already displaced soil. And as that worm goes through, the soil is moving. Well, factor this a thousand times with earthworms and ants digging their tunnels um, skunks burrowing in it, um, all of the different nematodes that are moving through there, birds, the robins that come to get the earthworm and he's pecking his beacon, the shift in the ground surface, the frost we get, the thaw we get, the rain that hammers down, the drying out, all of this is constantly causing the soil to move. So if we go right down to the very bottom, zoom, and we're going to, you like that, zoom, 
We're going down to the bedrock. Now, the vast majority of us in Calgary, we are never going to dig deep enough to bedrock. Um, you may get it if you're building a house. Only times I've ever encountered bedrock whilst gardening was back in Montreal, um, in the town in Montreal called Montreal, which means uh, the Royal Mount, uh, literally on the side of a mountain. And there'd be times when we were digging um, a patio foundation and you'd literally hit the side of the mountain. I'm sure there's people in Canmore, uh, maybe even Cochrane, Banff, who have experienced that. But the bedrock is the anchor. That's what all the soil builds on. And then up from that is the parent material. So in Calgary, we all know a lot of the parent material that we see around here is essentially two parts. It's clay and it's sand. Then we have the subsoil, and the subsoil is where all the goodness has leached down, the hummus, the topsoil, the alluviated, which is a blend of that, and the subsoil has trapped it all. So the subsoil is actually quite rich in heavy minerals, uh, volcanic minerals, um, rocks, all of the goodness that's pushed down. But then the subsoil, in its turn, has pushed up parent material into the alluviated. So that's why you're going to find a lot of clay and silt there. So that essentially is your layer of soil. They absolutely all have a place. You're planting a new young shrub um, and you plant it in. This is your gold zone right here. This is where you want it. Great organic material for it to live in. Um, you know, obviously that's the top of the pot here. So it's above ground, it's getting all of that. It's into the topsoil, so it's got a good anchor. Then the roots go. Now the roots are starting to find water because this alluviated is heavy and it's holding moisture. So now they're finding their own water and they're anchored in there and they're solid. Now it can actively start growing. And then this material is feeding all those adventitious roots. They get a feed, then they hit the topsoil. Now it's very rich. Then they're hitting this. So the roots are getting thicker and deeper and bigger and stronger. So those are the layers of soil. You really only need to concern yourself with the top three when you're planting a garden. These are just interesting. I just, I don't want to talk about every, uh, about these three. I want to be, you know, inclusive with everything, including my soils. So we'll continue with soils tomorrow. We'll talk about the differences in the material, differences between an actual soil and a growing medium, uh, what your plants need. Some plants get this. They don't like a good soil. They like a very neglected, tired, dormant soil. We're going to cover all of that this week. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Uh, enjoy. Uh, and I'm going to just stay back here and soil myself. <laughs> I had to throw in my soil joke. Uh, stay with us. Honestly, the jokes do not get worse. Actually, they probably do. But we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a wicked Monday, everybody. Bye.